And that thing that you wrote, which is like a little story, it's going to serve for the basis of everything. So what you have, actually, um, it's called the treatment. Treatment is uh, a few things. One, it's a short story. It's written as a short story. But before we carry on with this video, I wanted to thank Kerov for supporting this channel. Kerov specializes in personalized vitamins and daily supplements. So I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I've been taking vitamins for over 10 years now. And because I follow a vegan diet, I want to be mindful to get all the vitamins and nutrients I need especially when I'm traveling. So this summer I happen to travel a lot and I noticed that every time I do you guys, my diet, my sleeping schedule, my routine, all of them, they change a lot. And so no matter the destination, I've been carrying my care of vitamins with me and it's been so nice to rely on them with my daily supplement needs. My favorite by far was the sleep blend. So I suffer from major jet lag and it takes me several days, sometimes even weeks to adjust to a new schedule and I've been taking the sleep blend right before bed every time I had to adjust to a new schedule and it helped me tremendously. I can't recommend this one enough, especially if you need the help on the sleeping department. Thank you so much Kara for having my back, for having compostable packs and for having cute funny messages on them. It's always the little things. You can take the care of quiz to see what vitamins and supplements they recommend you. Click the link down below and use my code for 50%, 50% off your first care of purchase. Thank you so much, care of. <laughs>
no lo he visto en mi vida, pero ¿qué es esto? Me encanta, ¿sabes? O sea, por, por eso, porque son piezas que aparentemente son muy... Everybody and welcome back to my apartment I came back officially two weeks ago and you guys it's so nice to be back I missed my apartment my bed my bathroom uh, I miss mr. man I'm guess I was just there sleeping um, in the corner and baby so I have an amazing view for this video and since I realized that the vlog part of this video was kind of 
short and by short I mean only eight minutes I asked my patrons which way they wanted me to finish this video most of them agreed to end this video with a haul because I bought a lot of books you guys I my okay this oh god I feel <laughs> you guys know I love talking about books but my last video was a book haul so I'm like is this too much is this are two videos in a row about books that I bought too much. And so if buying too many books is, is wrong, I don't wanna be right. And so this is, this is me sharing with you some of the things that I bought. Also, speaking of books, I wanted to thank you, you guys so much for your recommendations around sci-fi. So if you're missing out on what is happening, I just started reading The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. So, and if you ever read sci-fi, you understand the pain that it is to read a book that has a lot of terms and names that are not familiar because they're made up names and terms. There was one person, Francis, who said, I put my trust in the author that the important names will stick. And I think this is this is the thing. This is the the thing that I'm channeling right now. Is if Ursula, <laughs> I know she's an amazing writer, and so I'm gonna trust that the important names is they're gonna stuck. And so thank you so much, you guys, for your book recommendations and for holding my hand throughout this sci-fi experience that I'm going through. Um, also, thank you for teaching me things, you guys. I still feel kind of ignorant when it comes to books because this is a journey that I just begun uh, a couple of years ago and there are a lot of things that I miss on books and so for example you were really really kind to let me know that Gogol is actually from Ukraine he's not Russian and so or he wasn't uh, Russian and so thank you so much you guys for being so kind and knowledgeable when sharing these things to me because I'm a newbie, I'm a, I'm a book baby and I wanna keep growing and you're allowing me and facilitating this path and so thank you so much. Without further ado, these are some of the... Wait, can I, can I show you something really quick? So I got this. <laughs> I'm suddenly into clothes, you guys. Isn't that amazing? You guys know that I love secondhand uh, most of these books actually are secondhand, but I'm also really into secondhand clothing. And I got this, is, it, is this a jacket? You guys, fashionable people watching this channel, is this considered a jacket or not? Because I think this is like a summer jacket and I love it. It's something that I will never would have picked for myself in the past. But it reminded me so much of Monet's water lilies. And so I can't wait to parade this, to show this off the next time I go to a museum. I don't know if you can see it, but it's so cute. Uh, another random thing that I wanted to show you is actually this little guy. So, so in Sevilla, I found lots of these uh, vintage places in which you could find these tiles and so i am mesmerized by this one in particular i don't know why it looks like a bush or like a tree <laughs> but this color you guys follow me everywhere when i was in spain especially in barcelona and so i think this is why barcelona's color is green because i saw this shade everywhere i went and i'm so happy i did because it's such a beautiful color and now i can remember not only my trip but what the color like the themed of my trip and so i'm gonna put it right here suddenly i'm like surrounded by tchotchkes that happens when you're 35 by the way you're you start collecting little treasures you're like a you're like a crow basically so the first book that i want to share with you is el otoño del patriarca by garcia marquez i'm gonna i'm gonna say a lot of words in spanish so buckle up so i am so intrigued by garcia marquez i also have conflicting thoughts with garcia marquez and the way he portrays relationships and um, a lot of things that I feel uncomfortable about. And also I think the way he writes is just mesmerizing. And so having that conflicting thought and also this curiosity by him, 
led me to want to keep exploring and read all of his titles just to see like, okay, I want to understand this person. And so I've never heard of El, El Otoño Patriarca, but when I started doing research for this video, um, I found that he said that this book is a poem on the solitude of power. And it's basically the story of this make-believe dictator based on real dictators. Gustavo Rojas, of his Colombian homeland, Franco of Spain, um, and Venezuela's Juan Vicente Gomez. The product is an universal story of the disastrous effects created by the concentration of power into a single man. And so I am really interested because also my country had a dictator, uh, Chile Pinochet. And so I am really curious to read this book. The second book that I got, you guys, is Isabel Allende, La Casa de los Espíritus. Isabel Allende is a Chilean author. I'm sure you have heard of her. And I have never read Isabel Allende in my life, which is weird to say out loud because it's my mom's favorite author. And so I am really curious to read Isabel Allende. And this was her debut novel, actually. And the story, and I'm reading this, is mainly told from the perspective of two protagonists and incorporates elements of uh, uh, magical realism, which is based on Garcia Marquez, and is the story of the life of the Trueba family, spanning four generations. And there's a lot of Chilean imagery around uh, this book. And so I guess I'm curious, not only because it's my mom's favorite author, but also why people keep referencing this book all over, like over and over again. And so I can't wait to read this one. So the next two books that I got you guys are from Cristina Rivera Garza. And I have a very good friend in Chile who really, really recommended Rivera Garza to me. And I looked them up in Santiago and they were all sold out. And so when I went to Barcelona, I was really excited to find a couple. And so the first one that I got is El Invencible Verano de Liliana. And I'm scared of reading this one because, so Cristina's sister Liliana was killed by her own husband. And so uh, by Liliana's. So, Liliana's husband killed her. I don't know if that makes yes. Okay, so uh, the story, and I'm reading this, is the story of Liliana through the eyes of her sister, Cristina, uh, seeking for justice on behalf of victims who don't have the voice or even the words to speak out. And so it's, uh, it's gonna be a hardcore book for me to read. Um, and the next one is Nadie Me Verá Llorar. I don't know if it's literally translated as no one will see me cry, but this is the story of this photographer who is taking pictures in this mental asylum and becomes obsessed with one of the patients in this asylum and starts um, gathering information about her and so on. And yeah, I'm really intrigued by this one. And the last book that I got on this realm, on the fiction novel uh, department, is 2666. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, so <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this is Roberto. This is by Roberto Olaño. You guys know Roberto Olaño. Roberto, my good friend, also Chilean, also Chilean, proud of a Chilean. Um, I am so excited to read this one. This is, this is a hefty sucker. Look at this. This is a baby. Like you, you're supposed to rock this baby to sleep. Um, I've been wanting to read 2666 for a while, you guys, because I read the Savage Detectives a couple of years ago and I am in love with Bolaño's writing. He's such a... He's such a good writer. So this this book also, fun fact, is Patti Smith's favorite book. So that's another reason for me to read it because I love Patti Smith. So 2666 is the story of this elusive German author and also the unresolved and ongoing murders of women in Santa Teresa, which is a city, a violent city, based on Ciudad de Juarez in Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yes, and it's epidemic of female homicides 
And I'm sorry for being so vague in general about the description, but um, um, I don't want to have any spoilers of any kind. And these were already too much for me uh, because I'm like, this is the thing. I love going into books without knowing anything about it. And so this is all I know about this book. I honestly can't wait to keep reading it, but I'm still fighting war and peace. And so this is going to be for another time. So I don't know if you can see but all of the rest of the books are graphic novels and scenes. So if you wanted your graphic novel dose, I'm here for you, baby. The first one, and I saw this author in this comic everywhere, you guys, is, and I'm reading it, jo Joan Svar. Sorry for butchering your name, baby. And this is the Pequeño Vampire, and it's like the little vampire. Vampire? I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly. So the way I choose graphic novels, you guys, is almost the vibe that I'm getting from them. Like I, when I started flipping through the pages of this graphic novel, I was in love by the textures and the way Joanne conveys materiality through different lines. And so usually when I pick a graphic novel, I have to click with the illustration style. It's almost the first glance or like the first thing that I noticed from a graphic novel is, do I like the illustration style? Yes or no. And so that's my very professional <laughs> system for scanning and going through which of the graphic novels that I wanna get. And that was the case for the little vampire because the textures you guys are so freaking nice and because i'm always trying to convey materiality through lines within my work i'm always mesmerized to see how other authors and illustrators are going to almost like assemble this puzzle because when you're drawing and when when you're drawing a graphic novel when you're writing a book it's almost like you're always solving a puzzle. And so this is the puzzle that I want to see how the other illustrators are solving. And so I can't wait to read this one. So the next book that I got is by Nuria Tamarit and is Loba, Loba, I can't say it, Loba Boreal. And I fell in love with Nuria's illustration style. So the story is about Joanna who sets off on this journey to the new world looking for gold. But none of the crew, none of the, the groups of people, were, which are mostly men, are accepting women in their teams, like on their teams to go to this new world and get gold. And so it's a constant battle uphill to prove herself. And it's a story of finding oneself in the midst of nature and like very hardcore situations and remembering the land which doesn't exist anymore. The thing that captured me the most, I think, is, again, not only the textures, you guys, but the way the main author remembers things and like the way Nuria can convey smells and sounds without, like, because there aren't any smells and sounds. And so I love when illustration in graphic novels gives you this three-dimension experience, uh, which also happens in novels, but I love when you can feel things that are go beyond the page in a story. So uh, thank you so much for doing this novel, Nuria. I loved it. So the next couple of books, you guys, I don't know if you can tell, but they're all scenes. Barcelona has amazing places to get scenes or independent publications, and I didn't shy away from that. I wanted to get all of them. So I got Waiting by Luna Pan. I love Luna's uh, illustration style, so of course I got this scene made by them. I got this one by Nao Tatsumi, which I don't know if you can tell, oh my god, but the landscapes and the way this person illustrates are, oh my god, I, yes, yes to this. I also got Manual de Pipinología by my friend Julia uh, Sagramola. Julia and I are, happen to be friends. We're friends online and in real life. I love her work. Julia, you're amazing. And so, of course, when I saw um, her book on uh, Finestres, I had to get it. And also, I managed to um, meet Pipin, her dog. And so, I'm so excited that I, I have finally this one with me. Uh, also, I got Save Breves Encuentros 
by also Luna Pan, which so happy. I also got it because like I said, I love their style. And last but not least, Mi Vida Sin Ti by Mi Yu Lee. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, uh, but it was actually published by them. And it's just, I can't wait to read this. I just love the color palette and the way this book was edited. I thought it was very cute. The next one is by Power Paola, Todas las Bicicletas Que Tuve. And it's basically a collection of all the bicycles Power Paola had and has had in her life. And so I cannot wait to read this because I love Paola's illustration style. I've been following her work for a while and since it's tricky to get books made by my peers in Latin America, specifically Chile and Argentina, um, and other parts of Latin America here in the US, when I saw this one, I'm like, I need to get it right now. The next one, the next book is Dulce Leche by Miguel Vila. I saw this book a couple of times and I was so curious about it. And the thing that caught my attention, you guys, is the way Miguel <sighs> explain things through the through frames and rhythm. So I'm gonna see if I can add some screenshots of what I'm talking about. But the way they organize information and the way they replicate or like tell a story through rhythm and through the organization of the information on a page is just so interesting. And I'm like, I need to get this book. So Dulce Leche is the story of this guy in a relationship making not the best decisions and also trying to explore his sexuality and what he likes and uh, poor communication skills and all of that, those things. But the just like the way this story is being told is so interesting when it comes to Again, rhythms and frames. So the next book that I got is this one. It's called Alfabeto Alemagna. And it's a collection or a compilation of the work of the illustrator Beatrice Alemagna. And so this culture association called Hamelin, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they did an exhibition on her work. She's a illustrator and author who specializes in um, children's books. And so they did this amazing exhibition about her work. And I remember seeing my friend uh, Julia's Instagram stories about the exhibition. And so when she was leaving, I'm like, please get the book for me because I was so enamored by Beatrice's work. And so Julia thankfully got this book for me. And I'm so thankful and happy you did, baby. So thank you, Julia. And this is basically a compilation of her work and what the exhibition was about. And so that's that's the book. So the next book is called Un Mundo Stil, A Hostile World. Uh, it was written by Gakian and illustrated by Nuria Just. And it tells the story of this teenager who is like dipping her toes into adulthood. There's a lot of things that happen and like she tries to become a model. There's a lot of like drugs things and like shitty things happening and like... So it's basically a coming of age story of a teenager uh, wanting to become, desperately wanting to become an adult. And it's a, it's a really interesting story and the thing that captured my attention the most is that um, this comic reminded me a lot of Ghost World by Daniel Klon, if I'm not, Glenny Close, Daniel, Daniel Close, I'm not pronouncing his name correctly, but um, I got Ghost World vibes and I loved the brush strokes and the textures of this um, graphic novel and that's why I got it. <laughs> and last but not least, you guys, this was actually a gift. My friend Cinta, who lives in Barcelona, got this for me. And this is Grip, Un Viaje Electrizante. And apparently it's sold out because it's really good. This book it was illustrated and created by Lale Westwind. Most likely I'm butchering your name, baby. So I'm so sorry. And it's the story of this protagonist who has a weird accident and her hands can stop moving. And so he, like she gains this amazing power and she can do things with her hands. It's almost like a superpower. And so is this, is a, 
It's basically a homage to all women connected to their bodies and minds, ready to transform the world by themselves. And I thought it was so cool. The illustrations are amazing. So what I've been told originally, this book was printed with Riso printing, Risograph. And so I, the color palette, you guys, is insane so i can't wait to read this one it also has no words it's like a just like a illustrations and like a silent graphic novel so no matter where you come from or where is the language that you're speaking right now you will be able to read this book so the last two things i wanted to show you even though they're not books necessarily i wanted to share them with you because I'm so proud I got them. So the first one is this record by Block Party. Silent Alarm is such a jewel of, um, of a record and I can't believe I finally have it on record. And the last record that I got, oh God, I'm so excited for this one, is Emperor Tomato Ketchup by Stereolab. And I love Stereolab. This is one of my favorite albums. And I can't believe I finally have it on a record. It's very tricky to find. It can be expensive at times, but I love Stereo Lab, so that's a, that's a nice treat for me. Yeah, you guys, I think those are all the books and things that I wanted to share with you today. I am so, this is the thing like, and I'm sure you relate to this feeling of, I'm so overwhelmed and I'm carrying this weight of so many books that I want to read, yet there's not enough time to read them and so i'm feeling both overwhelmed and excited at the same time which i think it's it can be a good thing when you're you know uh, buying books anyway thank you so much you guys for watching this video and for all your precious advice on reading and authors and for teaching me things i really appreciate it that you're holding my hand in this reading journey because as a baby reader i really appreciate your company also thank you so much patreons for supporting my work and this channel and for buying me books you guys thank you um if you can join my patreon that's totally okay by watching this video trust me you're doing more than enough i'm gonna have lunch now and probably open the window because it's getting very hot but i hope you're having a lovely day a lovely week and for next video you guys i'm gonna do a getting my life back back together so to speak because after a long trip the thing that i love to do the most is just like settling back in into my routine so next video is gonna be all about that so i hope you stay soft and stay hydrated goodbye <laughs> that was so weird. Anyway, bye you guys. <laughs>